Hey, what is going on ladies and gentlemen, my name is Corbett, and welcome back to another 1.30 Emperor video. Let's talk about the changes coming to religion, mostly Christian denominations, but there's also a sneaky little change in there for Sunni nations as well. Today we'll include the Catholic rework, introduction of the Hussite faith and the Bohemian mission tree that we recently learned about, and ending it off with the changes to the Defender of the Faith. If you're looking for changes to the Papal States specifically, I might point you in the direction of the Italy video, where we take an up-close look at the Papal Mission Tree. Without further ado, let's start by looking at the changes for Catholicism by going through the new UI. Desire for Reformation is now displayed in the top left as opposed to hidden in the Religion tab. Papal Influence, the core mechanic of current patch Catholicism, seems not to have changed at all. However, we have to assume that the old abilities have been moved to the Religion tab because of one of the other abilities we'll cover soon. The number next to that represents your chance at becoming the next Curia Controller. Now, let me explain the next big mechanic, which is the Papal Tithe. It's essentially the treasury of Catholicism, which can be spent on various abilities by the Curia Controller and is increased over time by the clergy-owned land in Catholic countries. However, nations who decide to pass the dissolution of the monasteries will stop donating to the tithe. The current papal controller can also put their own country's funds into the treasury to get a higher chance of becoming the next Curia controller. The treasury can be spent in a few ways. First of all, you can investigate heresy to delay the reformation. This removes 5% reform desire, but makes it grow 10% faster each time you investigate. Next, you can assign cardinals to different nations directly. Doing this improves relations between you and the target nation, and gives you a higher chance of being the next papal controller as well. After that, we have the Golden Bull, which functions similarly to the deity mechanics for Hindu, except it costs ducats from the tithe and affects all Catholic nations. The Pope can decide for their lifetime to pick a Golden Bull from six options. Each one has a base cost of 1,000, affected directly by the percentage of Reform Desire. They appear as follows. Apostolicae Servitutis, which halves the cost of Papal Abilities. This is why I assumed that the abilities have been moved to a different part of the UI. Christian Pictus, which grants 5% dev cost and plus 1 tolerance of heretics. Dei Gratia Rex, which grants plus 0.5 yearly absolutism minus 2 unrest in all Catholic provinces, and minus 25% drill decay. Elias qui se pro divini, which allows for crusades after the age limit. Immensa Eterni Dei, which grants a few bonuses to institution spread and cost while allowing cardinals to spread institutions between each other. And Libertas Ecclesiae, which grants 20% imperial authority growth and plus 15 reform approval from Catholic princes in the empire. Obviously, you can't do Libertas Ecclesiae if the Empire is no longer Catholic. Speaking of which, once the Reformation ignites, the ecumenical powers in Rome will form the Council of Trent, allowing the Curia Controller to enact concessions for all Catholic nations. The Council will last 50 years at most, or until the Controller picks four concessions. Each concession costs 2,000 from the Treasury, but can be reduced. Each time a harsh concession is taken, it will reduce the heretic's opinion of Catholics by minus 20 each, while taking a conciliatory concession will provide plus 10 opinion. During this time, all Catholic nations must decide their stance each time they have a new ruler. The number of cardinals from nations in favor of each stance is what determines the final cost of each concession, with a maximum 500 ducat reduction. Now let's talk about the harsh side of the council. Nations with a harsh position receive minus 20 opinion of heretic countries, gain 25% resistance from reformation centers, plus 2% missionary strength, and minus 25% institution spread. The first harsh concession grants plus 1% missionary strength against heretics, the second one grants 10% true faith institution spread, the third gives plus 10% manpower in true faith provinces, and the fourth gives minus 10% war score cost versus other religions. Now onto the conciliatory side. Nations which take a conciliatory stance will get plus 10 opinion of heretics, 
minus 25% resistance to reformation centers, plus 25% improved relations, and minus 5% heretic missionary strength. The first conciliatory concession will grant plus 2 tolerance of heretics, the second one will grant plus 5% institution spread, the third will grant plus 5% total manpower, and the fourth one will grant minus 20% curia power costs. And any nation which hasn't chosen harsh or conciliatory stances will have a minus 33% resistance to reformation centers. So it's always a good idea for devout Catholic nations to pick a side. If you wanted to wait to convert to a different denomination though, staying neutral would allow faster conversion of your own lands before you decide to swap faiths. Speaking of other faiths though, let's move on to the new Hussite faith, which traces its roots back to Bohemia. Early in the game, the return of the Hussites event will fire and Bohemia gets the opportunity to elect a Hussite noble as a king. From there, three things can happen. Bohemia can convert to Hussite officially, the Hussites and Catholics can reconcile, reverting the Hussite provinces to Catholic, or Bohemia can aggressively convert the Hussites to try and impress Rome. If Bohemia chooses to adopt Hussite, they can later choose to convert all of their provinces to Protestant during the Reformation, or to keep their mechanics which are similar to Protestant anyway. Hussite has access to the same church power mechanics as Protestants, but the bonuses they receive are far more interesting and powerful in my opinion. Starting with infantry combat ability and conversion strength against heretics is a powerful bonus for sure. I also find in particular the pacifism and regular defenestration aspects to be of particular interest. However, I'm going to be putting all of them up on screen right now in case you want to take a look at them. With the introduction of Hussite, I feel I should also go back to where I missed a spot in the Germany and Bohemia video. So let's talk about the Bohemian mission tree, which will be available only to Emperor owners. The leftmost patch is the most unique among many mission trees out there. From my knowledge, it's one of the only mission trees so far that actually changes its rewards and requirements based off of what you pick during the Hussite event. If Bohemia breaks with the papacy and adopts Hussite, then the Hussite resurgence mission will spawn a center of reformation for 100 years in Prague. The rest of Bohemia's mission tree focuses on being very HRE centric, while also gaining the power to keep out the Ottomans. The second branch has you force Hungary and Poland into personal unions, and then prepare to drive the Ottomans from the Balkans. After humiliating Austria, Bohemia can also subjugate Saxony and Brandenburg without taking the normal penalties for doing so. The following two missions have you become Emperor, pass the Perpetual Diet Reform, and expand the HRE to be a whopping 250 provinces while being at peace. This will grant you a powerful plus one Diplo Monarch skill and minus five years of separatism for the rest of the game. The fourth branch is about the development of crystal goods and mining in the country. So now that the main religion changes have been taken care of, let's talk about the changes coming to the Defender of the Faith mechanics. Defender of the Faith has changed significantly from before. In the current patch, it's in your best interest to become the only country or one of the very few countries in your religion before you take the Defender of the Faith. However, in 1.30, it will be the exact opposite. Defender of the Faith now has multiple tiers depending on just how many countries you're actually defending. There are five tiers which I'll show the benefits of on screen. Each tier adds at least one benefit, which in total adds up to being more powerful than the current Defender mechanics. Tier 1 starting with just yourself, Tier 2 at 5 countries, Tier 3 at 10, Tier 4 at 20, and Tier 5 at 50 or more. This does mean that Defender of the Faith becomes less and less powerful as the game progresses, but that would make a lot of sense as the concept of defending a faith became less and less prevalent over time in our own world. Finally, to finish off today's update video, we have some changes made to the Kingdom of God and Unify Islam decisions. In this current patch, enacting the Kingdom of God is relatively useless, as it locks the few useful mechanics that Catholic nations enjoy. In 1.30 though, the Papal States will have a name change upon taking the decision, will be granted the Empire rank, and will unlock the Kingdom of God Tier 3 government reform. This reform grants you yearly devotion, 
yearly prestige, and national manpower modifier. Oh, and it also doesn't lock the mechanics anymore, which is a lot more useful than it was before. Similarly, Unify Islam will grant you a name change to the Caliphate, will lock you to a feudal theocracy government, and will no longer require that you have all of your lands completely converted. So, those are the changes coming to religion in 1.30 and the Emperor expansion. Of course, check out the playlist if you're interested in learning some more in-depth details about France, Italy, Germany, and so on. Now, which part do you want me to cover next? There are changes to revolutions and the whole government rework to talk about. If you want to see more Emperor content covered before the release date of June 9th, then leaving a like would go a long way to making that happen. And if you don't want to miss the next one, of course, subscribing and turning on notifications is your best bet to make sure you're caught up with every single upload. This is Corbett signing off, and as always, have a fantastic day. I'd like to give a quick thank you for the following patrons for the month of May. In the $1 tier, we have Quiet Guy, Quigersol, Farron, DLNM, and TFLJ Martis. In the $3 tier, we have Ben Greenhagen. In the $5 tier, we have Justinian. In the $10 tier, Natsuki. And in the $20 tier, Chewy Shoot. Thank you guys so much for your pledges, it means a lot to me, and you're really helping to move this channel forward. Again, I cannot possibly thank you enough.